Hello guys, it's Robert here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a stock analysis on Hello Group, also known as Momo, which is a Chinese dating app. I got a comment recently saying that uh, I basically just talk trash about a whole bunch of stocks and show a video of a stock I like. And I do get what he's saying, like I do trash a whole bunch of companies, basically because I was recommended them and so I did videos on them. And I also want to do videos in advance before companies, you know, go bankrupt. I really want to do GM like ASAP. Obviously there's a chance that they won't, but if they do, I want to put it like out now before like, you know, waiting six months or something. And it could probably happen in six months, it could happen in like two years, you know, you never know. But yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of stocks I do like and I have been holding off when it comes to like doing those videos but I will be doing them now. So looking at the market cap of Momo is a 1.2 billion dollar company and we don't really need to read the overview because it's a pretty much Chinese dating app the old Chinese people over there. So revenue growth over the last five years has gone from 1.3 billion all the way up to 2.2 billion. There has been a dip obviously from COVID which makes sense. If we look at the profitability so they lost money in 2021 once again it makes sense with all the China fears and all that stuff and also their uh, profit dropped in uh, 2020 which also makes sense because of COVID. But at least they made money during COVID because I'm kind of surprised that they actually did. Obviously there's no PE ratio currently because the company has lost money within the last uh, year. Now we're going to be looking at the company's uh, price to sales ratio and comparing it to their sector average. So once this thing loads, look at the price to sales ratio, it's 0.55, which is just insane. And uh, they're in internet and content, like, you know, thing like kind of like social media or whatever. Looking at their sector average, 5.29, 7.39, 8, like basically 9, 9, 8.75. It's way, 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 way below their sector average, man. That is actually really, really good to see. Next, we're going to be looking at the company's retaining earnings to see if the retained earnings are growing. 390 million all the way up to uh, 736 million, obviously you know, a dip because of COVID. But if we look at uh, common equity, so from a billion to a billion six and has dropped from 2020, makes sense. If we look at the solvency of the company, current assets, uh, 1.4 billion, you can just say 1.5 billion the current liabilities are uh, 400 million and then their uh, total sorry their total liabilities is uh, 1.18 billion so they do have enough cash on hand to pay off all their debt which is very good that's like a major good thing when it comes to their balance sheet a lot of it isn't goodwill in terms of like assets in general but at the same time there is a lot of uh, pretty much cash and short-term short, short, short -term investments that alone can pretty much almost get rid of all their debt actually it can damn so this cup is actually very solvent which is good to see and it's also located in china china obviously is pretty sure it's a creditor nation if i'm wrong then that's kind of embarrassing but they also have a high savings rate they have massive trade surpluses it's a quote-unquote communist country socially but economically is way more capitalist than america i won't get into the specifics of that so if we look at momo's uh, current and quick ratio current ratio and quick ratio both 3.7 and the debt to equity ratio is 0.4 which is good to see if we look at the company's total debts so 760 million in total debt but uh obviously they have enough cash and cash equivalents to pay off all their debt and actually if you look at the market cap it was like 1.2 billion dollars right that's pretty much yeah so there's more cash in short-term investments than the market cap of the company which is like super crazy to see if we look at shares outstanding they went from 199 million just up to 198 it actually went down but they were issuing currently and then they bought back shares which momo did announce they're going to buy back shares and then they did so basically from 2017 till now the shares outstanding went down by just a little bit like maybe like half a percent or something like that if we check their free cash flow let's see what's going on with that obviously there's going to be a dip in COVID and all that stuff so from 394 million down to 230 million but it was growing before obviously COVID. I'm, i've been saying this so many times in this video man oh my god i actually hate, hate saying it because everyone says it obviously so if we look at the cash flow statement to see what they're doing with their free cash flow so they did an acquisition in 2018 so they were able to afford that right so 2018 okay that basically took up like all the free cash flows so 448 million they did not have enough free cash flow to do it obviously they could have used the cash on hand and all that stuff to do the uh, acquisition so they sold off and invested in some marketable securities other investing activities issued a billion dollars worth of debt uh so that was probably for the acquisition or investing in whatever this marketable security was i have not been issuing nor paying back any debt which is kind of weird i mean they don't have a lot of debt compared to the market cap it is quite a bit they're easily able to pay it off but they're not paying it off as you can see nothing has happened in 2019 2020 2021 or like trillion 12 months so buying back some shares and then paying out some dividends so if we look at their cash from operations which i will be doing more in the videos if i'm going to look at investing and financing i might as well just look at that cash from operations adding back some uh, depreciation and amortization gain on sale of assets and then loss on sale of investments so there's more losses than there are gains whoa they had a write down oh shoot so that's probably why they had a big uh, loss in 2021 how did i not see that in the uh, income statement okay so now i'm looking at it on the everything money software as you can see here there's other income and expenses of a uh, loss which is a uh, 662 million dollars but actually their operating income was positive which is good to see i should have looked at the operating income to be honest but once again it's like a different format from a uh, roik ai and everything money so everything money is more clean to be honest i just use work ai because the whole like i guess scrolling feature kind of thing that i like there's, it's just everything in once which is why i use it for the videos because it makes it easier to show but uh, yeah that's basically why they had that loss so honestly the fact that their operating income was still positive below the ccp crap is actually really 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 good to see i guess it was like a write-off of goodwill or something like that but then it came back so i'm not really sure let me check the 
the EM thing again. Okay, yeah, so they did have a write-off in Goodwill. So from 692 million all the way down to 4 million. I guess they just didn't update on Seeking Alpha, but so that was the reason for the loss. And the good thing I saw this on the cash flow statement because then I would have just missed that throughout the whole video. Look at that too though. So that's something that's not good to see, stock-based compensation. They are buying back shares, but yet they still did some stock-based compensation in 2021. Changing AR, not really that bad. I mean, obviously you want to see it positive, but you know, 1.6 million is not really the end of the world. They are deferring some debt, which is pretty good. Then changing income taxes, changing the operating assets. So it's not really bad, that bad of cash flow statement. And also if we do the price of free cash flow, I did not really do that. The price of free cash flow is 52 Two, which is freaking insane man five dollars for every dollar in free cash flow and that was just because of a write-off in goodwill man that's actually insane bro like i love this company man also if we look at the company's uh, debt to free cash flow it is less than five which you get to see so they can pay off all their debt with three years with the free cash flow three again 1.67 0.98 so during the good times of uh, 2019 their uh, debt to free cash flow which is 0.98 which is really really good next up we're going to be checking to see if the company pays a dividend and you can't see it here on uh, work ai so we'll jump back to the em software this company pays a sexy dividend of 10.8 percent oh my freaking god talk about the mother load of dividends man and they actually can't afford this dividend with their free cash flow and the fundamentals of the business aren't even that bad so you are being 100 percent compensated for your risk as a stockholder this is exactly what i love to see and obviously the stock price has fallen drastically which actually brought up the dividend yield which makes sense so if we look at the coupon rate on uh, momo's bonds and if you hear my fan i'm sorry about that just em whenever i turn this thing on my laptop man it just goes freaking crazy but the coupon rate on this one bond that i'm finding that's maturing in july 2025 is one 0.25%. So finally, stockholders are being compensated for their risk compared to debt holders. Pretty sure we saw that on other companies too, like Kellogg's, but the fundamentals was like so bad that I just did not even want to buy that company at all. Look at that, man. Oh, that's just what you love to see. Now we're going to be looking at the company's ROA, ROI, and ROE. So it's pretty bad because obviously the huge uh, of the loss in 2021 because of the write off and goodwill. So hopefully the return on invested capital is not that bad. So the return on invested capital was pretty good, man. Look at that 23%, 31%, 26%, 22 This is what 2020, so it makes sense. 15 percent just like rounding so let's go check the company's whack so looking at momo's weighted average cost of capital it is 5.47 percent and look it's showing the trailing 12 months is 23 percent like in the positive so this difference between uh roy ki and, and this guru focus website is just freaking annoying and look at that whack it has just fallen look at that 11.7 and then 13 15 actually it has raw sorry it has risen and then fallen so actually you might want to look deeper into this to see like the way average cost of capital like split up between the uh, debt and equity now i'm on the stock analyzer tool that was created by everything money and i had to be very concerned with these uh, assumptions because China's still like doing all this lockdown and a lot of stuff. It could be opening back up soon, but you ne never really know with the CP CCP, sorry. So I'll go one, two, and three percent revenue growth. And that's already from like, I think two billion they have right now every year. Profit margin, I will be uh, turning this company back to profitability because that was just a one year write down in uh, Goodwill. So the average is 10%. So I'll go six, seven, eight, and then six, seven, eight. And because the uh, PE was like very low over the years, I'll do a PE of two, three, and four, two, three, and four for the price of free cash flow because that uh dividend was 10 percent, man i don't know what i should put it, be putting for the uh, rate of return i'll just do 12 and a half percent and then see what we bang out i swear to god man if this is only green i swear to god okay <laughs> so on the uh high assumption it's in the in the green but the low and uh, mid assumption it is uh, pretty red but if i do like more optimistic revenue growth let's go four five and six percent revenue growth analyze that again so it is a green on a mid and high assumption if you change the revenue growth obviously all right now i'm on excel we're going to be plugging in the revenue growth numbers so i did one two and three percent revenue growth looking at these numbers i mean over the next 10 years that's definitely possible with like you know how bullish i am on the chinese economy in general so i was like very very conservative when it came to that if we plug in the four five and six percent revenue growth so it will basically make the company almost double the revenue on the high assumption and then uh going on the low assumption it will just bring it up to 3.2 billion dollars and also the Chinese population is absolutely like insane. Looking the, at the fundamentals of this company, man, it is pretty good. Just at uh, right down in Goodwill. And good thing I did catch that. I mean, imagine watching this video and not knowing till the end that I found out about that fracking Goodwill, man. My bad. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. For the guy who requested this video, hope you enjoyed this video as well. Hopefully I'll be doing like more positive uh, videos. I, I will be doing Alibaba. Like I pretty much have to. I mean, I do own uh, Alibaba. I will be doing more positive videos soon. Uh, there are a couple of videos that were requested that I need to do as well. SoFi and something else. And I know SoFi is like complete dog water so that's going to be a negative video but uh, yeah i'm out guys drop a like subscribe down below i do daily uploads i didn't upload on sunday because on saturday i just had a huge day and a lot of stuff and like stuff to do i probably won't be doing videos on the weekends to be honest because if the market is closed that means i'm closed if we're being honest here because these videos it takes a while to edit and a lot of stuff yeah i'm out like subscribe see you later